Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. How's everybody doing? This is G. You're watching All Astrology, and we're going to talk astrology. Um, <clears throat> seriously, though, we are going to discuss Lilith. I'm going to try and do this quickly, and I'm really telling myself this as much as I am sharing it with you guys. I'm going to try to make sure that I keep myself under a time limit because I can't seem to keep anything under 20 minutes lately. And it's kind of really sad. So anyway, um, Lilith, what do we know about Lilith? Black moon Lilith. There's lots of Liliths. When you start digging and diving into the Lilith stuff, it's like, what Lilith are we following here exactly? It's, it's kind of complicated. So the only way to figure that out you know, is to look at a chart that has multiple Liliths on it, and then you can see which one I'm following, right? So anyway, this one's called Black Moon Lilith. And I know there can be complications sometimes, but what I want to direct you to, because this might help, I know in the past I've directed people to go and use astro.com. And it's still a really good website, but it can be complicated. It is it's really an astrologer's website. It's not technically made. It's not very user-friendly. How's that? But I like it because, uh, well, it became a favorite when when uh, my astrology partner at the time and I saw all the discrepancies with time zones and errors and charts that you could draw up on their, you know, with using their software and different websites. So astro.com, you know, was the only one that, was had the least amount of errors with the time zones. So um, for that reason, and that's a huge reason, because that skews your entire chart then. If the time of your chart and the time zone is incorrect, you could be a completely whole different rising sign than what you thought you were, which is how we found that out, including my house, my, my, my astrology partner, <clears throat> who found out that, um, yeah, it kind of just changed her stuff all around and and then we started looking at other people's charts and it was like, oh shit, this is more common than we thought until we went to all the different sites online and everybody had a glitch in their software. So don't know if they fixed it, stopped making that my problem. It's now, I just use my own software and um, my astrology partner knows how to draw up a heart, a chart old school, literally by hand. So we started doing that sort of work a few years ago together. She was teaching me. We, we got the books, you know, that and all the stuff you got to do. We went through it and we did it. And I was like, holy shit, thank God that we have computers now. <laughs> it is laborious. There's lots of steps to it. Lots of calculations. You got to open a lot of books and follow all the scientific calculations. Anyway, without going through all that for each and every chart, uh, online is great. So that was to explain why astro.com was chosen as a very reputable uh, website. Now, with that said, a lot of the uh, people on the channel, especially when we go to the Starry Night Lives every Saturday night at 9 p.m., if you're new, I'm just letting you know, every Saturday at 9 p.m., I'm live, and that gives you the opportunity to ask questions about your own chart. It gives you the opportunity to have your chart looked at on the stars um, in, in the live stream uh, at the same time chatting and talking with other people. And you could even pop on the screen and have a chat with me if you wanted, because that's what we do in the star room. It is a safe space to discuss your chart, to discuss what you're going through, and to maybe give you some understanding and help you figure out possibly uh, maybe what the future holds for you. I hate that that just sounded so like fortune teller like, but anyway, <laughs> it's understanding there's cycles to the planets and the way they move. And those planetary cycles have everything to do with like what we experience in our world. Like this, the, just, yeah. Anyway, she's called Black Moon Lilith. All right, so there's Lilith. So it's like a moon. It's, she's got this moon shape thing going on. Okay. So that's important. The moon is important, but she also has a cross at the bottom of her moon. You see that? She's got a cross at the bottom of that moon. Interesting. So you can take some of those symbols, symbols, and kind of think of some keywords. What do you think, right? What do we know about the moon? Family, home, history, the past, our tribe, our culture, where we've come from, where our forefathers came from, ancestry, heritage, 
uh, lands, literally home, literally like where our people come from, literally, not just so much about the culture, but the physical, the geography, but also the actual, the sticks and the bricks too. And connected to that is what? Your childhood, how you grew up, your mom, your mom, big word, mom, huge, huge mother wound. You guys have probably heard people reference that term. I've used to say it all the time, mother wound. It's a big deal for so many people, whether you're masculine or feminine. I need water. Hold on. Got the heat going in here. And and I've been talking a lot. <clears throat> I've recorded a lot. And um, anyway, so Lilith has an 8.8 year cycle. And what that means is a cycle. Let's, let's back this chart up so that we get, see the bigger picture of it because this just decided to be an arrow. Okay. It didn't mean for that to be an arrow, but it is. So let's, uh, let's go big on this chart or as big as we're going to get. And let's see when this cycle began. All right. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Black moon Lilith. If I look at this chart right below, you see the date. Black moon Lilith began her cycle in 2020. Whoa. This is a mind changer. Like looking at that right there, everybody knows 2020, right? Yeah. The year preceding the, the beginning of the pandemic, which kind of, you know, some argue, did it begin in 2019? Um, but either way, it began in 2020, which I think is officially when lockdowns began, right? I could be wrong. I, yeah, there's like two years in there, which I, that were like a hundred years. And, and then all of a sudden time began after the pandemic. So anyway, <laughs> clarify my brain, you know, help me remember like what's what, but Black Moon Lilith began in 2020, her new eight year cycle and began in Aries because Aries is the initiator. That's where it all starts. So she started her cycle 2020 in Aries and wow, it started off with the bang. Absolutely. With a big bang. So this tells us that if it's an eight and a half or 8.8 .8 year cycle, that says that by 2028, Lilith will be in Pisces and that will be that last, you know, that year right there, right? 2028. She's closing out. Now, when Lilith, the way Lilith works, just like a lot of the planets, there's lots of retrogrades built in. And, and she can go really fast and then back up, you know, like she, her, her energy can be really random. I tried tracking it once and I was like, I'm so confused. She just moved like 10 degrees in a few days. What's going on? You know, and then there's other times where it's like, holy shit, she's dragging. So it, it's, it has a lot to do with the, how that planet and it's, and it's orbit. Right. So, um, 2020, she was in Aries. And because she does retrogrades, there were times in 2020 where she dipped into Taurus. You see that? And then 2021 came around and look what she dipped into. Okay. I'm sorry. I don't know. Let's get that off of here. 2021 came around and she dipped into Gemini, right? 2021. And it seemed like things, I don't know, did things get spicier then? I don't know. I don't know if things have gotten any better, but, um, Lilith tends to be somebody who somehow throws a monkey wrench into things. And it's not that Lilith is necessarily bad, but Lilith typically, because it's the moon and we think about home and family and mom, but what's something I didn't say about Lilith that we know is connected to the moon? Did somebody say it? Did I hear it? Our emotions and our feelings in our feelings. You ever hear that saying? They were in their feelings or I am in my feelings. And so when, when we're, when we're in our feelings, we don't think real clear, do we? No, not really. We're, we're basing everything on how we feel. And that's become a really big keyword, right? I don't know if it began in 2020, like that keyword. I, I just noticed, you know, like I hear a lot of comments uh, and a lot of commentators and I know even myself, I find myself saying it. I feel like 
that's a word. Like that's a thing I feel like. That's a term. That's a, a thing that the people just say. Lilith is our emotions. And so in Gemini, maybe it became really prominent that year, 2021, going into 2022, where people were using it more. It's a really good possibility. But when we're in our emotions, right, Lilith tends to be our shadow side. There's things about Lilith and where she is in our natal chart where we're unaware of maybe some of the darker tones of our feelings and emotions, right? And so we feel a certain way about things and we don't know why we feel that way or we feel this intensity in a, in a sense because it has to do with the past. And so if it has to do with the past, it's strong enough to still be lingering. You follow? And so usually that stuff from the past stuff that's still lingering, there's an intensity associated with it. Okay. So Lilith energy, like if I were to go and read real quick, uh, I'm just going to click on what the software wants to give. Lilith is a sensitive point in your chart. It represents the darker side of your nature, your characteristics, you know, exist and need to address, but prefer not to acknowledge them. So it's not necessarily uh, so hidden. You're not aware of it, right? It's stuff that you've probably heard yourself do watch. You've seen yourself do it or say it. You definitely have probably heard yourself think it and you would prefer not to acknowledge it. So a lot of times Lilith can be when we are like pointing the finger at somebody else and saying, look what they're doing. And we know damn well, we do that very same thing, you know? So the sign of her placement is going to be important, right? The condition sometimes, you know, if something is Let's pretend that your Lilith is squaring Mars or your Lilith is conjunct Mars. Whoo, you're going to have a, a Lilith that I'm probably going to run from then, you see? So the sign and her placement has a lot to do with how she's going to express because she's all about expressing. She expresses, okay? So the house that she's in is going to be a factor as well. And you're going to want to find that because wherever the Lilith is up in the sky, whatever she's going through, the transiting Lilith, she's talking to your personal Lilith. And she, and, and all that information goes through your private Lilith's filter. Okay. So I'm going to give you an example for me, my Lilith. Uh, I don't even know where the hell my Lilith is. I should know these things. I think I know where she is. I, I'm, I believe it's in Taurus. Um, if it's not, I would really be shocked. Yeah. 756. That's my Lilith. Okay. So in other words, it's going to be it, like my Lilith is going to come out when it's about things that I value things that I feel are very important to me when it comes to my creature comforts, that's when Lilith is going to come sneaking out. Okay. And so it could be over food. It could be over the, you know, clothing. It could be over the smell and the sound. Oh my God, I'm huge about sound. I'm huge. And I'm sorry, but it's just the reality. My Lilith is in my 12th house. 12th house is sound. Okay. It's also highly sensitive. Okay. So for me, for so long, I'm like, I wish somebody could do something about noise pollution. I, I, it's one of the reasons I love the winter months in the Midwest is because people have to close their windows. You don't hear all the motorcycles being really loud. You don't hear people drag racing. Like you don't hear that in the winter months. And I love that. I feel like it's a respite for me. It's a respite for me, you know? So in the summertime, when people are all really loud and just like, you know, I mean, I know there's times where I'm more sensitive than other times, but it's just the thing every winter when, when spring comes as much as I love the change of seasons, as much as I love the spring, because I love hearing the birds sing and chirp. I love it. Um, and I just love change with the, with, with nature. I love it. I love experiencing it. Um, but I always say, I miss you already winter. <laughs> Because I'm already, you can hear the neighbor with his motorcycle, you know, as soon as it hits 40 degrees outside, he's revving it right outside the window. He parks it there. And it's just like, I just, yeah, I miss winter so much at that time. Plus, you know, I do love the snow still, but that means the other times of the year, my Lilith, I'm just like, I get, I get mad. I get mad because I just feel like, what the hell? And, and then smells, that's a big one for me too. People smoking. Oh. God, 
people, neighbors, neighbors, like people not even in this house, but the neighbors smoking and cigarette smoke coming in your window of your home and you're breathing in smoke. You've made a conscious choice to quit smoking 20, 30 years ago. And now you've been smoke free and you got smoke coming in through your windows. Or even if you weren't a smoker, you don't want to be breathing the secondhand smoke. So it's like, I have major, I, yeah, like you can tell, I get really fired up over this shit. I really, truly do. And so that's my black moon love for sure. I'm just like, I, I become just, I mean, I've gotten to the point where I was on um, ghost hunting. Uh, you know, I was in a group. And so we used to do uh, investigations. We would spend the night at places and, and just do our investigations. Well, there were people on the team that would smoke. And so that's one thing. And that's their thing. That's their business, not mine. But damn, you're not going to, I'm not going to be around you when you're smoking. I, I just can't, I do not, I can't handle it. I can't handle the smoke, the smoke. I just can't do it. Not to mention, I don't want to do it either. Okay. So not to mention the third thing is when you're on investigations, uh, the last thing you want is to have cigarette smoke when you're trying to record and you're using cameras and video equipment. Yeah. That kind of takes away the validity of what you're doing. They're supposed to, you're, you know, to, you know, I kind of take everything from a scientific point of a scientific perspective, which is you have to kind of be in a controlled environment. So we have to try to control the environment as much as we can. Well, hello, if you need to smoke, you need to leave the premises and go have a cigarette. It's, it's bad enough that when you come back in, I have to smell all that because it just, you know, smokers may not know it, but like the smoke is just a cloud that they walk in. It just, anyway, not my thing at all. No desire. So that's like an example for you to see my Lilith. All right. Just giving you, yeah, just, just the truth. It's just what it is. That's where my Lilith shows up for me. So for you guys in your chart, find out what sign your Lilith is in and find out what house it's in. I gave you an example of the sign it was in for me, Taurus, and the 12th house and why it is such a big deal for me right? Not that it's not a big deal for everybody, because a lot of you can have a lot of difficult aspects. You could have it conjunct your Mars. You could have it squaring Mars. You could have a lot of difficult things that where your Lilith becomes, where she can be a real problem if you're not aware of it, okay? So to be sure, because I'm Taurus energy, not just, not just that stuff in Taurus, I'm a double Taurus. I don't want to have a fight with somebody. I don't want to have a confrontation with somebody. Um, but when it comes to things about my health and my well-being, um, I'm going to say something. And so I did. I, I didn't go to that person. I wasn't mean about it. It was more I tried to take the professional approach, which is like, wow, this contaminates the scene. This contaminates the recordings. This contaminates the work we're doing. It kind of seems like, why why should we bother doing this? Because if I'm watching videos of, of paranormal stuff, but it's smoke and I have to discern that it's smoke, well, that's a waste of my time. And I just said it like that, you know? And so, yeah, it caused problems. It caused problems. And uh, so that was just some of the small things, right? But for me, those weren't small things. Those are really huge, big, important things. Because my health, you know, when you make a choice to be healthy, when you make a choice to not smoke, like when you make a choice to not put that kind of shit in your body, it's a big deal. And, um, and for those that it's not a big deal for, well, that to each his own, but just what you're doing, if it affects me, if I have to inhale your shit, that's a problem then, you see, right? So we all kind of got a glimpse of all that during the pandemic, because during the pandemic, what were we doing? We were trying to be healthy. We were trying to stay healthy. And for some folks, the best way they could stay healthy, if they wanted to be out in public, was to wear a mask was to protect themselves and wear a mask. And others, even though they might not have been a sickly kind, they didn't want to spread germs. So they were wearing masks because they would feel horrible if they, if they had carried something and somebody else contracted it from them just because they were the carrier and they could give it to them, right? So everybody had these different perspectives about that. And for those who, who um, there were those who were like, oh, hell no, I'm not doing that. Okay, fine. You're not doing it. Then don't do it, you know? But in my mind, I kind of saw it like, well, okay. Um, hmm. So with that all said, um, that's how Lilith can show up. Things can get real sticky, real sticky, real fast. 
Okay. So it says it's, it's something in your life where you know you're kind of a stickler, right? But you won't change it. You, 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 cause you don't want to own it. You know, you don't want to be like, did I do that? Right. You don't want to say, uh, yeah, I'm like that because it's almost like I'm ashamed that I, that I, that I, that I, am I petty for being that way? Right. And so it says here that the black moon once become aware. Now the dark thing, the dark part of it, isn't the fact that, that, that you have, um, that Lilith is there. It's really more of how you allowed her to express because she will, na she will naturally express in a dark way. She would just naturally express that way. Okay. Unless you've become aware and you know, to put a leash on her. Right. And I hate to say it like that, but, but to, to, to pull her in and to have some control over her. Right. And to say, Hey, wait a minute. It's one thing to feel that way. You have to pay attention to how you're going to word it and the way you're going to say it and the tone that you use when you talk about it. That's going to be vital, right? So black moon can be a gift. I'm reading it from the software. It can be a gift. Typically, we will go about pretending that it's not us. And we deny and we often project her her expressions onto others. And we say, oh, that person's doing it. We project it. We point the fingers. The black moon's gift is the opportunity to bring unconscious and self-defeating behavior into the light of day where it can no longer run amok. It no longer has control over us then at that point. Okay. So as far as her cycle right now in 2024, let's get up to speed. You see 2023, she was in Virgo. 2024, she's in Libra. And she's going back and forth right now, we're noticing. We're noticing right now, she's in Virgo a lot, and she's going to go, and she's retrograding back into Leo even, right? But as this year goes further on, she's going to do the back and forth game with Virgo and Libra. And so when Black Moon in 2024 gets into Libra, um, you'll notice a change. It's almost a guarantee that you will notice a change in relationships partnerships, business partnerships, lawyers. What do we got here? In 2024, going into Libra, and uh, that will occur halfway through 2024, actually. So the thing about this chart is they give you the cycles of when the planet first enters into the sign. All right. So yes, Lilith does enter Libra in 2024. This chart is the, is the, you know, the backdrop, the big picture. How about that? I said the backdrop, the big picture. And so it's not until the very, 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 butt end of June, literally July 1st, end of June <clears throat> that Lilith in 2024 first dips into Libra. She'll go into Libra energy but then she'll back out again and she'll go back into Virgo. You see, it's just like what she's doing right now. Right now, she's like in the first, you know, first half of Virgo and, and then dips back into the last half of Leo, you see? So she'll dip into like the first 15 degrees or whatever of Libra and then do a retrograde back into the 15 degrees of Virgo. And that back and forth goes on for like almost a year, almost a year, right? Until she then the following year later, halfway through starts dipping into Scorpio. So her cycle can be really erratic because she can move. Like I was just looking at how she moves and she was at 22 degrees of Virgo. And then like four days later, she was zero degrees in Libra already. She moved like so fast. And I think normally if she's not retrograding, her speed is normally pretty quick. It's the fact that she can go forward a couple of days and then suddenly retrograde backwards. And so uh, sometimes those cycles are short and sometimes they're long. So her her movements can be like a yo-yo, right? Which explains, which explains why Lilith can be difficult for us because there may be times where she may snap off and seem extreme and other times where we, it feels like, oh, so... 
maybe I just wasn't feeling good that day. You know, that kind of a thing, we kind of chalk it off. Oh, I wasn't feeling good or it was a stressful day. And so we kind of dismiss our behavior, our own behavior, and we kind of shrug it off. And then eventually something else will occur and it'll come back again and we'll express in that certain way. And, and it'll be like, ah, oh, don't do that. You know, it, it's not good. It's not going to work. So we all have Lilith somewhere in our chart. We all have it somewhere in our chart. Big, that's the big story here. <laughs> that's the big picture. But for 2024, Lilith is, is uh, still going to be in Virgo, like she is right now at the time of this recording. Um, and she's making her way back into Leo, back into Leo. And she's going to be doing this until halfway through 2024. Once we get to the halfway marks, yeah, and end, end of June, end of June, going into July, then she first ingresses. That's the word they use, I-N-G-R-E-S-S, -S, when a planet moves into a new sign, when a planet's moving and it's new, right? Her first ingress, her move, first forward movement into Libra, all right? So that will put a conundrum with relationships, fixed relationships, important relate. I said fixed relationships, important relationships, people we commit to, people we will even sign a contract with, people we work for even, right? Partnerships, business partnerships, marriage, that kind of thing. Right now, it's domestic. It's Virgo. It's Leo. It's how we express, right? It's how we have a good time. It's how we have fun. So she'll change her flavor. She'll change the way she expresses. Find out where your Lilith is. And then you can see where the Lilith in the sky, how is she angling your Lilith? Is it trining? Is it squaring? Remember, whatever the current Lilith is going through, she's communicating back to your birth Lilith. And that has a lot to do with how your birth Lilith communicates. All right. You got any questions? Comment below. I will see you all in the next video. And if you are still here, please know that I always appreciate your time. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.